to the Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe and like. Our Pistons tonight, what a bizarre night. This was such a bizarre game. They were pathetic. They, it was ridiculous how bad they played. But it was bizarre. I mean, we started out two hours before the game. Stu punches what um, Drew Eubanks in the town going back to the locker rooms. And we've got some sketchy information about it so far that, according to the Suns, it was unprovoked and that he sucker punched him. That was the report from the Phoenix Suns. And Monty said that was unre- irresponsible. You know, they didn't have all the information. He said he had talked to Stu, but... Who knows what happened? I mean, I'm sure we know that Stu is a passionate person and he gets pretty fired up and he doesn't take anything from anybody. As, you know, with the LeBron incident when he's chasing LeBron around Little Caesars Arena with blood pouring down his face. But we've seen him get in scuffles with other people and he he doesn't put up with anything. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, Stu's been, I'm sure he's frustrated because he's been, can't hasn't been able to play for a long time and he's going to come back after um the all-star break and so who knows exactly what happened but yeah they the nba said that they're going to review the video whatever video they have on it but it was just you know how that that affects people you know when the team hears and knows something like that happened and you got a young team like the pistons and stewart's one of our leaders and all that's going on and then the game starts and then it's just helter skelter and the game starts in five minutes into the game. Um, Devin Booker gets two technicals and gets tossed. The, the Phoenix Suns get four technicals. They're playing without Bradley Beal. And then they're, now they're playing without Booker. And so they, just, they still have Durant, but they don't have that great of a team otherwise. And so I think, oh, this is good. And we're getting to shoot these technicals. And Cade missed one of those. He, he missed another technical later. Again, I... I don't know what our team is shooting on technicals, but it's bad. I mean, I know that Bogey missed some technicals. I know Killian missed some technicals. But anyway, it was just a bizarre night to see all the things that happened. And we were, but we played, we were pathetic. You know, we, we fouled way too much. Still, I mean, I'm sure the fouls, the the fouls were, in the end, we shot 10 for 16 and they were 30 for 35. And, but we, we just got killed. And, you know, there were times they had lineups out there with Eric Gordon, Bold Bowl, Grayson Allen, Nurkic, and Okoji. I mean, they weren't, you know, they don't have that great of a team. What, you know, um, Grayson Allen is the leading the NBA in three point shooting. So he, he's been really good. And Nurkic is tough, but they, they, their team isn't that great without those other guys. And, and Durant, Durant had 25 tonight. He, he's just the real deal. But, yeah, so it just was crazy. But our whole team, we had 15 turnovers in the first half. 15. We were down 70 to 41 at halftime, and they they went on a big run just at the end of the half. But yeah, even so, at halftime we were six for nine from the line, and they were 23 for 25, and that that didn't help. But we we did. And so then the other thing is we're out there right away early early in the first quarter. Ivy picks up two fouls, and then he go, comes in. He so he hardly play. He comes in the second quarter, and he gets a dumb foul. You know, and he's he's, he's got to be smarter. I mean, the first, the second foul he got, he already knew he had one. And then with five minutes left or something in the first quarter, there's a guy that's going to get a breakaway. So he reaches out and grabs him. So that now he's got two. Now he's on the bench, and then in the second quarter he gets his third foul, trying to like block a shot. Go, he goes after a guy. And you just have to be smarter than that when you're in foul trouble. So he, he played seven minutes, you know. And then Pontecchio, who was leading us in scoring, he gets with – he only plays nine minutes because with about eight minutes left or something in the second quarter, he gets his third foul. And then Asar, with 11 minutes left, he, he, he had three fouls. And then Wiseman did too. So, that you know, we just had – it just took us, you know, we were mentally out of the game, but we just would drive into the lane and they would just strip us, just take it right from us. Um, we would throw passes just right to, it doesn't even seem like we were throwing to our own team. It seemed like we were throwing to anybody. Cade was terrible and he had five turnovers in the first half. It just, 
It's just bad. And so it's real disappointing. And I, I was going to mention this after the Laker game, talking about the game tonight. So, you know, I've been, I have a perspective of being around for a long time and I have a lot of friends who are college coaches and, and I've watched a lot of basketball and I know that teams going into like college teams going into Christmas break, the coaches will tell me they, they, they play terrible. And when they know there's a break coming, I was, I was a teacher for 36 years and before like Christmas break or spring break or, or summer break, kids, they, they go crazy. They act, they just act, I don't know, they act abnormal. They just act wild. But anyway, NBA teams going into breaks and stuff, they do that too. And even, even just the last game, the getaway game after a long road trip. And this was a, you know, Monty talked about how this was a tough road trip and how we, um, had the scheduling was ridiculous about, you know, we'd have two, we had two back-to-backs on a Western conference road trip. And again, that's not an excuse. And the Suns played back-to-back. Of course, they got to play back-to-back at home. But he even said that, you know, Kelser said that the fact that we had to sit around, you know, for two days in between, between the other games. So we played back-to-back and then we set two days. So anyway, it was just no leadership. That, Includes Kay, that includes Monty, that includes everybody on the team, and they, it just was very disappointing. We won four out of eight games, and we're so pumped up. And I'm still optimistic, of course. I'm an internal optimist, but um, we'll see what happens after break. And Monty says he's going to have like a mini camp, so we got all these new guys. So that's another thing besides long road trip, big trade, half your team flips over, Stu gets in a fight, you know. All those, all those technicals, all these weird things happening, and it just was, it was just crazy. So, um, yeah, the, they had four technicals right at the beginning, and I just, it was just, just, it was in disarray. The whole game was, and I just wonder what people are thinking about. So, anyway, Montecchio, he played twenty minutes. He was seven for sixteen, two for eight on threes. He likes to shoot. I can tell you that much, and. Hopefully he shoots better, but his percentages were better when he played for the Jazz. The, again, the Jazz people are really disappointed, and they're, some of them are mad because they wanted them to make the playoffs, so they're upset that they they really didn't get any players for Pontecchio or even um, other players that they traded away. So, yeah, they, they're just frustrated, but they love Pontecchio. I had a, one of their fans, a podcaster, say to me that, take good care of him, we love him, and so... Asar was brilliant again tonight. So we had these two last last two games against the Lakers and the Suns, and almost everybody on our team played bad except Asar. He was awesome tonight. He he tried to jump right over Nurkic once. <laughs> he he's fearless. He just went flying in there from took off from way far back. But yeah, he six for ten. He was 0 for 3 on free throws, though, but he was had 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals, 12 points. So he's been averaging a lot. He's been doing really well since he's been starting to get to play a lot. So Duran had a weird game. He was kind of in a funk. He was only two, 23 minutes, 2 for 6. He did have 9 rebounds and 5 assists in 23 minutes. That is impressive, but he just d- didn't seem to have it tonight like he usually does. 7 points. So Cade, 26 minutes, 5 for 11. And that's that's not terrible. 0 for 1 on threes, that's not terrible. He was 3 for 5 on free throws, which he doesn't usually miss, except when he shoots Texas holes. says, I'd like to see what his percentage on technicals versus um, just regular free throws is. But he had 4 rebounds, 8 assists. He had 6 assists in the first half, I think. He had, but he, he hardly played in the second half. They Monty didn't play most of the guys. You know, he didn't play the, any of the starters hardly in the fourth quarter. Uh, he had two blocks, but he had five turnovers. But he had, um, I think he had six turnovers, but I, maybe he ended up. But he had, he, they all all were in the first half except for maybe one. So he had 13 points. Ivy, so this is weird. Ivy played only 14 minutes. So he did have, he ended up with three fouls. But, you know, he did get those three right away. So, but then he didn't, he could have played him some more in the second half. I don't know what that was about because everybody else got to play 23 or 26 or 24 minutes of the other starters except for, Ivy only played 14, but he was 0 for 5, and he's been shooting really good. So in the last 10 games prior to the Laker game and the Suns game, he was shooting 54% on threes. And by the way, 
Happy birthday, Jaden Ivey. He just turned 22 yesterday. I meant to wish him happy birthday yesterday. Not that he listens, but I feel bad for him tonight. But him and Duran are going to go out, get to go to Indianapolis for the All-Star game, and they get to hang out with all everything and all the excitement. And I hope they play well. They're on the same team in the Rising Stars game. So there's three different teams, and so that's going to be cool to watch them play together. Hopefully there will be some lobs and some dunks, and hopefully they get to do some pick and rolls together. So um, Brown was, played 10 minutes, two for three, one for one on threes, five rebounds, which is impressive in 10 minutes. Troy Brown Jr. In, in only 10 minutes. He had five points. Muscala played nine minutes. He didn't. He was 0 for 2. Wiseman. So Wiseman was incredible last night. Just incredible. So this is the ups and downs of the NBA. But he's he played nine minutes, 0 for 2, one rebound. He had two blocks, which is weird, but he fouled out. <laughs> and so yeah, you know, that was terrible. But um Fournier. Try to get optimistic about him. He had three turnovers, and they weren't the best, but he was four for 11, so he didn't shoot great. He was two for six on threes, and he hasn't been playing all year, so I guess we got to give him a chance to play. But I, I wasn't sure that we were even going to use him, so I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen there. I thought we just kind of took on his salary to make that trade, but it looks like Monty's going to use him. Uh, Milton. He didn't start out good, but he played 13 minutes. He was three for seven, two for three on threes, and one he got fouled in while he was shooting a three pointer. He had six rebounds, 13 minutes, and two assists, eight points. So he was good. Sasser, another back to back bad games. You know, we get so excited about him, and then he, you know, it seems like he does great or does terrible. But he was 15 minutes, one for six, 0 for four on threes, two rebounds, three assists, three turnovers. In 15 minutes but our team shot 38 percent only 26 percent on threes and 62 percent on free throws but we had 18 turnovers they only they only they had 19 <laughs> so but most of them so the final score it was 116 to 100 and again it wasn't that close at halftime it was 70 to 41 at the end of the third quarter we it was like 69 to 99 so Jaden Ivey, though, in ISOs, he is one of the best ISO players in the NBA. That means isolation when he scores in isolation. So his scoring frequency in isolation, he's number one in the NBA. 57.4% of his ISOs he scores. Um, he's number five in points per possession, ISO points per possession. So on ISO, per possession, he scores one point one. 15, one in fifteen hundredths points per possession of in, in isolation. So, but he is so in the entire NBA. Kawhi Leonard is number one in isolation scoring. Dejounte Murray's number two. Shea Gilders Alexander's number three. Steph Curry's number four, and Jaden Ivey's number five. And Halliburton's number six. That's um, Harden's number eight. So, anyway, that's pretty impressive for our guy, and he, you know. It's, Kate still gets more opportunities in isolation, so that's why we still have to give, try to get Ivy more chances than he's getting, and Kate a little bit less. So, um, but Kate still, you know, I mean, I know people. <laughs> I got some of my listeners. They they comment about we just need to get rid of Kate or whatever. But he, of guys um, in the NBA, all the guys in the NBA, twenty two and younger, and there's a lot of good players, twenty two and younger in the NBA. He is. Um, Th scored the third most 22 points per game is the third most by any player 22 and young uh, and under so and guys that scored 20 points and seven um assists in piston history and that's what he's doing right now he's going to easily do that this year there's only four guys in piston history and isaiah thomas did, the great isaiah thomas did it five times they being three times and grant hill did it once and Cade's looking to do that so you just don't do that if you're not a very good player, but um, I watch. I'm going to be watching the Knicks because I still love Bogey and Burks, even though they're not with us longer any longer. But I I didn't say this after the last after we traded them, but I admired them how they handled their time in Detroit. They they always were positive. They never acted like they were frustrated. In it was frustrating times. We were losing all these games. Bogey never acted like he was too good, or Brooks never acted like they were too good. You know, and they're these good veteran players, and they're playing on this 
terrible team, but I, I still have a lot of respect for the way they handled that situation. So uh, hurry up, Quentin Grimes. Hopefully you get to come back the first game. We're playing in Indiana, the first game after break. So I'm excited to watch him play, and it's still going to be a challenge to see what Monty does with all these players and how he's going to find playing time for them. But I don't know. It's going to be interesting and fascinating. It's, we got to get better. We These games are important. This end of the season, we have to find out as much as we can about our team, but we have to develop these players. They have to try to improve and get gain some consistency, watch them how they work together and see what lineups work together. Can we play Ivy and Cade and Grimes together. We got to find things like that. We just have to find out and experiment. But I'm thrilled that we still started our um, core four, and I hope they keep he keeps on doing that. But thank you. I know probably not too many people are fired up for this podcast or probably even listening, but I appreciate everyone that is. And please subscribe and be the reason that someone feels cared for. Go Pistons.